Audio Jungle. So the title for today is Love by none other than Gida Mopsa. Now Gida Mopsa is a 19th century French author. He is remembered for his uh, genius in the opera of uh, short stories. His title Love will only make sense to kind and passionate human beings. Love is an emotion that abodes both in human beings and animals. In fact, on a raw comparison, one will find it to be more unalloyed in animals than in men. Haven't you heard of the love tragedy? He killed her, then he killed himself. Uh, therefore, he loved her. So then, what does he or she signify separately or individually? Well, they signify nothing. It is only when they unify in love, the world comes alive for both of them. In the story Love, the narrator is uh, reminded of a story after reading a tragic love story in one of the newspapers. Uh, the narrator's story takes place in the days of his youth uh, during a hunting expedition at his uh, cousin's estate. Narrator's cousin, Carl D. Rovell, invites the narrator to join him in a duck shooting expedition held early in the morning. Carl's estate lies in a valley that has a river running through it. During dinner in the great hall, whose uh, sideboards, uh, walls and ceilings are all covered with uh, stuffed birds with outstretched wings or perched upon branches, hawks, herons, owls, nightjars, buzzards, vultures, falcons, and where my cousin himself like some uh, strange animal of the Arctic region in his uh, seal skin jacket puts before me all his uh, plans he had made for this uh, night and uh, particularly for this, uh, for this uh, shoot. The area is very scenic. The river has naturally promoted healthy plant growth along its uh, banks. There are many trees with good foliage uh, that attract birds of all kinds on the land. At some point the river expands into a marsh that the narrator describes as the best hunting ground he has ever seen in his life. The group leaves for the marsh a little after three in the morning. It consists of the narrator, his cousin Carl, the gamekeeper, the dogs Plauson and Piero. The narrator describes his cousin Carl as a jolly red-headed and big-bearded, immensely powerful fellow of forty, a lively and likable sort of a beast who had within him uh, just that uh, pinch of Eric salt that makes uh, mediocrity tolerable. He lived the life of a country gentleman in a house which was half uh, farm, half mansion in a broad valley uh, through which uh, the river flowed. The narrator further goes on to describe the surroundings. Woods covered the hills on either side with magnificent trees in which were to be found rare examples of game birds than in any other district uh, close by. Sometimes eagles were shot and also birds flying south, which hardly ever came near the overpopulated parts of the country. The valley was covered with huge uh, pastures irrigated by ditches and divided by hedges. The river, narrow at first, spreads out at a distance way into an immense marsh. This marsh was the best bit for shooting I have ever known and uh, was my cousin's very special care. He looked after it as he would look after uh, any particular uh, precious park. The narrator further describes the scenery around. I love water passionately and wholeheartedly. The sea, although it is too vast, too turbulent, impossible to call one's own. Rivers, on the contrary, are so pretty but uh, which hurry by and vanish forever. A marsh is a world of its own. Upon this earth of ours. There is at times nothing more disturbing, more disquieting, more terrifying uh, than a bog land that is the marshy land. It was freezing hard enough to even uh, split the stones. We were to leave at half past three in the morning so as to arrive 
at about half past four at a place chosen for our shooting expedition. At this place, a hut had been constructed out of blocks of ice to shelter us a little from the terrible wind which uh, rises just before dawn. I woke up at three o'clock. I put on uh, uh, sheepskin and found my cousin Carl uh, clothed in bearskin. After two cups of hot coffee and a couple of glasses of cognac, we set out with our gamekeeper and our dogs, uh, Plozen and Pero. It was freezing and I felt frozen to the bones. It was one of those nights when the earth seems to be frozen to death. The icy air rises as a veritable wall, uh, which one can feel horribly and painfully. No breath of wind moves it. There it is, solid and immovable. It bites, pierces, withers, kills trees, plants, insects, even little birds which fall from the branches on to the hard ground and themselves become hard in the embrace of the cold. With bent backs, hand in pockets and guns under our arms, Carl and I strode along, our boots wrapped around with wool to prevent us slipping on the frozen brooks. Made no noise. I noticed how our dog's breath turned into steam in the cold air. We soon reached the edge of the marsh and we entered one of the avenues of the dry reeds leading through the low forest, suddenly at the bend of one of the avenues, I saw the hut made of ice which had been set up as a shelter for us. I went in and as we had still an hour to pass before the birds awakened, I rolled myself up in my sheepskin to try to get warm. My cousin Carl was alarmed. It will be a great nuisance if we don't shoot something today. He said, I don't want you to catch a cold, so we must have some fire. He then ordered the gamekeeper to cut some reeds for the fire. Slowly the day broke clear with a blue sky. The sun came up over the bottom of the valley and we were thinking of going home uh, when two birds with necks and wings outstretched suddenly glided over our heads. I fired and one of them, a teal, a teal is a freshwater duck with a silver breast, fell almost at my feet. Then high. Above me, the cry of a bird was heard, a little heart-rending wail which it uttered again and again, and the little creature, the survivor of the two, began to circle around in the blue sky above us, watching its dead companion which I was holding. Carl was watching it keenly, waiting till it came within the range. You have killed the hen, he said, the cock won't go away. Indeed, it did not go away, but continued to circle and to cry piteously over our heads. Never has the groan of one in pain harrowed my heart so much as that call of distress, as that wail of reproach from the poor creature high up in the sky. Once or twice it fled as it saw the threat of the gun which followed its uh, flight, and it seemed prepared to continue its journey across the sky all alone then, as if unable to make up its mind. It would soon return to look for its companion. Put the other one down as it will return by and by, said Carl. In reality, it came back indifferent to the danger maddened by its uh, wild love for the creature I had killed. Carl fired. It was as if the cord which was holding the bird above us had been cut. I saw a black thing come down. I heard the noise of its fall in the reeds and Pero. The dog brought it to me. I put the two already cold into the same bag and I went back to Paris the same day. After knowing the narrator's story, one can see why the newspaper story where a man kills his lover then kills himself appeals to the narrator. The two stories are about love, the only difference being that one talks about love between humans and the other about love between animals. In both, the surviving losers uh, choose death over life. The narrator shoots down the duck and its mate remains, crying piteously over his dead love. The male duck, the drake, does not fly away. Instead, he circles over their heads continually and continues his cries. The narrator and his uh, cousin Carl lure the morning drake using its dead mate as bait and shoot him dead too. So friends, the man is so deadly, you have just uh, witnessed what I told you. The story has a long build up 
but at the end it delivers a great message of deviousness that a man is obviously used to the, the description of the jungle woods and the birds is par excellence i would give the story 7 out of 10 if you find time it's not a very long story you can read it it's a good one uh, it's been i if i am not wrong it's been translated from uh, french to english uh, so friends that's all for today goodbye and see you next week